Are you looking to sharpen your skills and deepen your understanding of the accounts payable process? I've identified 27 key facts that every accounting finance professional should understand if they want to work in, integrate with, or just need data from the accounts payable group. We're going to start off with some basics, but hold on to your hats. We'll rev up for some more advanced concepts before you realize it. Whether you're a seasoned pro or somebody just starting out, this piece will provide you with the knowledge you need to take your accounts payable expertise to the next level. Make sure you stick around until the end when we take a look at two issues most never seriously consider, but they should. Hey guys, I'm Mary Shape, a founder of this channel and the AP Now podcast, which now has over 600 episodes. I've also written over 20 business books, most focusing on business and accounts payable issues. But enough about me, let's move on to the critical fast facts about accounts payable. Let's start off with the definition to make sure we're all on the same page. Fast fact number one, the definition of accounts payable. While most are well aware that accounts payable represents the amounts company owes to its suppliers for goods and services purchased on, on, on credit, that's just the accounting definition. We are, of course, focusing on the functional definition, which relates to the definition of that department within the organization that processes bills called invoices in the business world for payment. Plus, they do a lot more. So while we recognize the accounting definition, everything going forward is about the accounts payable function. Fast fact number two, best practices. We talk a lot about best practices in the accounts payable space because there are best practices, almost best practices, not such good practices, and then worse practices. And these are the practices that will help you make sure that you operate an efficient and effective accounts payable function um, at the same time protecting about against fraud and complying with the regulatory compliance regulations that will impact your organization. And although we're not going to talk about them today, there are many. Fast fact number three, internal controls. We talk a lot about internal controls and more importantly, strong internal controls because implementing them helps you prevent fraud and errors. And some of the ones that we're gonna, we, we focus on a lot are appropriate separation of duties, approval hierarchies, uh, using the three-way match, etc. Fast fact number four, as I mentioned, separation of duties, also sometimes called segregation of duties. This uh, relates to how we divide out the work in the accounts payable fu function, and it means that we should divide the responsibilities among different employees so that we risk, uh, we reduce the risk for fraud and mistakes, that there can be no collusion, and it means that no one individual handles more than one leg of the entire procure to pay function. Fast fact number five, invoice processing. This is the main responsibility of the accounts payable function, and it's why it's probably the only thing that every accounts payable group does that's in, that's in common, because there are many other things. And when we talk about invoice processing in accounts payable, we mean the effective and efficient and accurate processing of invoices, because that's critical to managing um, a best practice accounts payable function. This involves verifying invoice details, matching them with purchase orders and receipt, ensuring timely approval. And it can be a quite intense process because if you miss one of these steps, you can end up paying twice or worse, falling for a fraud. Fast fact number six, payment terms. These, this is how you pay your vendors. And typically it is negotiated when your purchasing group sets up a, a, a contract, if you will, or goes to make a purchase. And understanding and negotiating favorable terms can impact your, your cash flow. Um, and along the same lines, when the purchasing group is uh, negotiating and they're negotiating payment terms, they may also negotiate discounts. So let's talk about what I mean by discounts or early payment discounts in fast fact number seven. Uh, early payment discounts, a big deal in some companies, not, not in, in all companies. And this is where the supplier will provide a slight discount if you pay early. Uh, according to very specific terms. The most common of these is 210 net 30, which says, hey, normally you'll pay us in 30 days, but if you pay us before the 10th day, uh, then you can get a 2% discount. Fast fact number eight, I'm running out of fingers to hold up. Um, this involves the three-way match. You're going to hear a 
lot about it. And in fact, we have a number of videos that we've done on the three-way match because it is so important in the accounts payable function. It is a critical control and it's the mechanism by which you match the purchase order against the receiving documents and the in invoice to make sure that you're paying what you're paying. You're not paying for too much. You're only paying for goods you received, etc. And of course, you're not paying a fraudulent invoice. Best fact number nine. Okay, all right, that's how we do it. Um, and this is dispute resolution. It is a big deal because when we do that aforementioned three-way match, frequently there is a discrepancy resulting in what I call a discrepant invoice. And when that happens, your processes, if they just don't pay, they just pay what they think they should, they don't go back and resolve it with the, comp with the supplier, you're going to have, the vendor is going to think you have a shortfall, they're going to try and collect it, it's going to create a lot of additional work. So timely and accurate dispute resolution uh, processes are critical to having an efficient and effective accounts payable function. Fast fact number 10, master vendor file. Uh, master vendor file is the repository of all information your organization needs to pay a particular vendor. Uh, the vendors typically are set up in the master vendor file ideally before you make a payment and you can have a lot of good information in the master vendor a file, assuming that you handle it using all the related best practices, of which there are many. Um, along the same lines, let's talk a little bit about fast fact number 11, which is we're going to talk about vendor management. Now, usually when we think about vendors and vendor relationships, we think about purchasing, but accounts payable can have a good impact on maintaining a good and strong relationship with the vendors. Um, and this typically involves making sure that invoices get paid in a timely manner and as we've already discussed that disputes get resolved also in a timely manner so both sides are aware of what the actual money is that's going to be coming. Um, we've talked a little bit about fast fact number 12 but I just want to take a moment to uh, spread it out and this is terms management um, and this is where um, you keep track of the vendor payment terms probably in the accounts pay in the midst of vendor file and by keeping track of the payment terms then you're able to to make sure that you pay, make your payment on time. We like to say in, a, in accounts payable, um, you know, we want to pay on time, the, the amount that's owed on time, not early and not late. Okay, this by by paying on time, you also avoid late fees. Uh, fast fact number thirteen: reconciliations. You need to periodically reconcile not only your bank statements but your accounts payable accounts with your vendor statements. Um, this helps you identify areas where your supplier may think there's a discrepancy. It also uh, is a great way, um, and you'll hear me talk about it frequently, for you to find vendor credits that you didn't know you have, and you'd be surprised how often this happens. You may think either you don't get them, you never get them, or that you know about them all, and a few of you will be right about that, but in many organizations, it, it, that's, not a, that's not true. It's just not true, and people are surprised when they find out how much money is sitting out there on their vendor statement. Uh, fast fact number 14 you know, five, ten. Okay. Uh, and this is, uh, we want to talk about payments and what I say it called the demise of the paper check. Most um, companies in the United States will make payments either with paper checks, uh, uh, a credit card, a P card, uh, an ACH payment, and in some cases, wire transfers. Uh, we are fast moving towards a time where many organizations are trying to uh, remove paper checks as a viable payment option, and they're looking to make payments other ways, typically either with P cards or with uh, ACH payments. So, you know, the United States still is one of the few companies that has a heavy reliance in the business world on paper check. So if you're wanting to run an efficient and effective system, hopefully you are looking to basically get rid of it. Uh, fast fact number 15, I want to just mention uh, briefly because it's important, ERP systems. Your enterprise resource uh, planning system, your accounts payable uh, process is part of it. Uh, typically when a company uh, picks an ERP system, uh, accounts payable is not part of that discussion. Uh, the company is more focused on the accounting uh, pieces of it. And when we talk about ERP, we're talking about things like SAP, Oracle, um, if you're a small company, maybe QuickBooks, and uh, there's, there's a lot more. I just mentioned a few. And uh, accounts payable needs to make sure that it integrates 
uh, properly with the ERP system and, and this is a biggie, that it takes advantage of all the functionality that the ERP system has. Many times the ERP system will, can produce a lot of different reports, but that functionality has been turned off. And so if you haven't taken a look, you really want to go and see what functionality related to accounts payable has been turned off because maybe you can use some of those reports and they'll automatically be generated. This way you don't have to have somebody in your shop uh, take the time to uh, generate the reports and that's a lot of work. Or they may have a re be, be a report that you'd like to have and you just haven't had time to set up or, or you don't have the staff to do it. So take a look at that if you have. Best fact number 16, portals. You're going to hear the use of the word portals in, a, in a, the accounts payable space frequently. Sometimes it is used to refer to an automation solution. Um, sometimes people use it to refer to a supplier portal where they keep track of all the master vendor file um, information. Sometimes it's both. Um, sometimes you'll enable your uh, suppliers to deliver their invoices to the portal, but we are fast approaching a point in time where most of the automation solutions can read an invoice from an email, and I think as we go forward that will become the standard way of the modus operandi, if you will, for our best practice solutions, so hopefully. All right. Best fact number 17, um, approval workflow. And this, you know, you set up your accounts payable workflow uh, so that you can make sure your invoices are approved and on a timely, in a timely manner. Um, if you're using an automation solution, uh, sometimes if you have an escalation, uh, escalations built into it, that helps, but it's not the silver bullet. Um, so you want to make sure that you get your invoices approved in a timely manner because that's the only way you're going to get them paid on time. And if you don't get them paid on time, the supplier is going to send a second invoice and that's even more work. Uh, I've already alluded to fast fact number 18, automation. We're seeing a lot of automation in the account payable space probably more automation than we're seeing in some other functions although they will get it too and if you use an automation solution either an accounts payable automation solution or an invoice automation solution this will help you enhance the efficiency of your accounts payable function it will help you reduce errors because you won't have as much manual data entry you'll still have some but that you won't have as much and it just it generally gives you good controls over your accounts payable process Fast fact number 19, AI is coming to AP. It's coming to the whole business community, and this is not the end of the world. I'm not just talking about AI that's being used in um, automation solutions, but I'm talking about the fact that there are now um, apps on, on the internet that you can use yourself, individuals can use to help them be more efficient and more effective. Uh, the two that readily come to mind, ChatGPT, uh, Microsoft Copilot, but they but there are many of them out there. They're either free or they cost very little. So this is the wave of the future. We need to get used to it. We need to learn how to use it. And then, um, you know, we'll be a little bit more efficient. Okay. Best fact number 20, technology integration. Okay. We are taught, we've, we talk a lot about automation and automation solutions, but when you get one, you need to ensure that they integrate with your ERP system so that, and they do it in an efficient and effective manner and that, you know they don't uh, integrate and enter uh, data that's not accurate um, but this will make for uh, greater data consistency greater accuracy and greater reporting because as we go forward um, there's going to I believe be more of an emph emphasis on data analytic work and uh, so it's important that we have good uh, information fast fact number 21 audit trails it's very important that an audit trail uh, be maintained through the accounts payable process. This is important for obviously for, for, for fraud pr uh, protection, but also, and we're moving away from this, there used to be a lot of finger pointing between AP and, a, and uh, purchasing when invoices didn't get paid. You know, AP would say, well, purchasing never approved the invoice. Purchasing would say, yes, I did, and I sent it back. You didn't do anything with it, blah, 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 back and forth. So with automation,
information that kind of goes away because there is an electronic audit trail and now nobody can claim something that they didn't. It helps us uh, make for stronger controls and processes. Okay, I want to talk fast fact number 22 about uh, documentation and documentation in this case around transactions. Um, and you know, we've got many documents in accounts payable. In fact, we did a separate talk on the 17 different documents used in the accounts payable. I'll link to it in the description. Um, but the transactions, um, the accurate documents help you get good records and uh, a decent audit trail. And then this leads to uh, more accurate financial statements, which is you know one of our goals in addition to you know paying people on time. Uh, fast fact number 23, documentation, the, documenting the process, or maybe I should have called this the policy and procedures manual. Best practice organizations will create a uh, up-to-date policy and procedures manual, which states exactly how the accounts payable process is being handled. And it should, by the way, state how the company is doing it, not what the company knows are best practices, but they're not doing it. And I like to uh, call, say that this is your protection against the lottery. Um, if all your AP staff chips in and buys a lottery ticket and they bought and they win, you know, the big one uh, and then everybody quits, you have the documentation so that you can get your bills paid, keep the lights running. It won't be easy, but you'll still be able to um, get your invoices paid. You don't have to worry about the electric company turning off the power. Fast fact number 24. Uh, we don't talk about this as often as we should, but I want to talk about accrual accounting uh, because it's important. So accounts payable um, not only obviously has the, the payables information, but it also will do the accruals for uh, the, the accounts payable, which as you know, are the data that shows how much money the company owes, but has not, not to get paid, you know, for goods received perhaps, but not invoices. And this should align with the accrual methods, the accrual accounting uh, techniques that you're using without, within the rest of the organization. Uh, fast fact number 25, this is something that we don't talk about as much as we used to. Um, outsourcing accounts payable used to be a, a big issue. Many large companies have outsourced their accounts payable function, um, often um, offshore also. But now with the implementation and the creation of affordable and user-friendly automation solutions, some of that is coming back. Uh, and we don't really talk about outsourcing as much as we used to. But that being said, there are still quite a few companies who have outsourced their accounts payable. Best fact number uh, 26, um, aging report. Um, and this kind of basically is one of the accounting uh, reports that accounts payable produces or somebody in accounting produces that categorizes uh, payables based on the length of time. Invoice has been outstanding. It helps prioritize payments and it's especially important in those situations where the accounts payable team might have uh, with it with the company I'm sorry not the accounts payable team the the, uh, the company might have uh, some financial constraints or cash flow might be tight okay and fast fact number 27 I've already alluded to um, uh, documents accounts payable documents there's the basic one obviously invoices um, which you know you think accounts payable you think invoices but that's just the start. As I mentioned earlier, there are 17 different documents you should recognize if you work in, manage, or basically have anything to do with the accounts payable uh, function or space. Do you know what they are? Many don't. That's why we did a talk identifying the most important documents and explaining what they can be used for. Um, I'll bet you've never thought of some of them. You can watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.